So a few months back, uh, me and my friends, we decided we were tired of playing Hero System for a little while, so we decided we were going to play some good old-fashioned D&D. So it wasn't really old-fashioned since we were using 5th edition, but whatever. And we decided we wanted to just have fun with it and do something really weird and off the wall. And we randomized what our races and classes and just about just about everything was going to be. And then we sort of took turns playing as the GM, trying to figure out who could make sense of this random hodgepodge of whatever the hell just came up. And I was thinking about that particular uh, session that we had had, or series of sessions, that campaign, and I came up with the idea of refining that sort of randomized system that we used. And so I'm presenting to you all today the the uh, fruits of that, which is a method of creating a more or less completely random D&D character. It is very likely that what you're making will make no sense and quite possibly be unplayable, but that's half the fun of it, trying to see if you can make it work. So, the first step that we do is we're going to roll for our stats, as per the rulebook. We're going to use 4d6, and we're going to drop the lowest die. But instead of assigning them like you would normally be allowed to, what we're instead going to do is we are going to roll six times, and whatever comes up first will be strength, whatever comes up second will be dexterity, and so on and so forth down the line. So we really don't have much control over what our stats are going to be either. And if you're a GM that wants to give, if you're a GM that wants to use this, you and you decide that you want to give your players a bit of a fighting chance. Just choose one of these random elements that we're doing and just let them choose instead of uh, having to randomize for it. So that way they have s at least some degree of control over whether or not their character is going to suck or not. So we're going to go ahead and start rolling the bones. Alright, so we've got a 14 for strength. Which gives us a plus 2 bonus for that. Then we have a 10 for Dexterity, which is a 0. Then we have a 10 for Constitution, which is another 0. The way it's turning out, I, I really hope I get Fighter. We have a 13 for Intelligence. Wizard wouldn't be a too bad of an option either. Then we got 15 for Wisdom. Okay, Cleric actually looks like it'd be the best at this point. And we have a 14 for Charisma. So as long as it doesn't rely on not on getting hit, we're good. So now we're going to randomize our race, which has a handy little, which there is a handy little chart that I made right here. Uses a D10. Anytime you roll a 10 or a 0 in this case, you would re-roll. And for different ones that have subclasses, there are different methods of randomizing that as well. Or sub-races, rather. So, our race is going to be Halfling. So we're going to roll another die. And if it's odds, we're going to be a Lightfoot Halfling. If it's evens, we're going to be a Stout. So 4 is even, so we are a Stout Halfling. Let me refer to the book real quick. Which, on this page right here, 12, there's a handy little ability score summary for who gets what. So we are looking for Halfling, which gives us a plus 2 to our dexterity. And Stout gives us a plus 1 to our constitution. Okay, so we get a nice even spread of everything now. Since we now have a 12 dexterity, for a plus 1 bonus there. And an 11 constitution, which isn't initially useful, but we can sort of build up into something that's a little bit better from there. So we can feasibly go anywhere we want with this character, but it's probably best to start off playing to our strengths if we're given a choice over our class, which we're not. So that was the race chart. I also have some subcharts for if you get something like Dragonborn, which that's something I have off screen right now. So your class. This one uses the D12, and there's a few subcharts for this one and sub rolls that you would have to make, but for the most part, after rolling on this, you move straight onto your background. 
and we got seven, so we are a stout paladin halfling. So let's just go ahead and write paladin under class here. And race halfling stout. So we don't really have, so it, it sort of follows that we got a decent charisma and wisdom, which I think those are important things for a paladin in this edition. And we've also got a decent strength, so we're just going to be, a, we're basically going to be a midget in a tin can, I think, since we can't really rely on dexterity to protect ourselves. And last is the background chart, which this one was a little difficult for me to make since there is a total of 13 backgrounds and 14 sided dice aren't common. So what I instead decided to do was, for the initial roll, you just roll for odds or evens, and then that'll determine what the next chart you're going to roll on is. So since I got a 5, which is odds, we're going to go for this chart right here, which uses a d8. So since 13 rounds up closest, the, most, the closest even number from 13 is 14, I had to find some way to split the charts into two into two in such a way that it would have E14 representations. So eight and six with eight being re-roll on the first chart seems like the most reasonable choice that I had there. So we're gonna go ahead and roll for our background now. And I've got a six, which is a soldier. This actually kind of makes sense. It is a st it is a stout halfling that is that was a soldier and then probably while he was out serving he had a some sort of religious experience that caused him to have to believe that there is a higher calling for him. So that was actually a lot quicker than I thought it was. So I'm gonna go ahead and get another get another character sheet, and we're gonna make another character for this. Okay, so I have my second character sheet now. And I'm gonna go ahead and make another one. I actually want this one. I actually kind of want this one to suck. So we're instead going to use. Just 3d6, keep whatever shows up, in the hope that we're going to get something that really sucks. Alright, so roll them bones. We got <laughs> six for strength. <laughs> okay, so we got a dead for dexterity. Okay, so we're sort of weak and wimpy, but we're not completely out of shape. And an eight for constitution. Okay, maybe we are. <laughs> okay, and intelligence. Uh, 10 for intelligence, and one of the reasons that this actually works so well in 5th edition is that there are no, uh, there isn't really a whole lot of restrictions on deciding what you're allowed to make with your character. Like, there isn't really any alignment restrictions or any race restrictions or, uh, stat restrictions. That Those only come up when you're trying to multi-class, and... And so you can really be whatever you want to be in 5th edition. It's just if you want to multi-class, well, you better have some 13s on your character sheet. So we got 10 for wisdom. And a... <laughs> 8 for charisma. Wow. I said I wanted something that sucked. And I got it. <laughs> so we've got a minus 2 bonus for strength. Minus two penalty. We got a minus one for constitution. No bonuses for intelligence, wisdom, and a minus one for charisma. This guy just sucks and no one likes him. <laughs> okay, let's see what you are that makes you so sucky. I actually got nothing but even numbers in that one. That was kind of a, kind of a freak occurrence there, I think. Alright, and we got one! A dwarf! Alright, so he's a useless dwarf that, is, that hails from the hills. Alright, so what do hill dwarves get? Hill dwarves get... Well, he gets a plus two to constitution, so you're at least not completely sickly anymore. I mean, as far as dwarves go, you still suck, but... <laughs> and a plus one to wisdom. Okay, so... If I was given a choice of what to do with this character, I would actually probably still go with fighter or thief or something. Because, <laughs> yeah, he has an 11 wisdom, but 11 wisdom doesn't really help you much when you're a cleric. Oh, come on. <laughs> he can do anything he wants. He just is going to suck at it really bad. All 
Alright, what's your class? What are you, you sucky little dwarf thing? Two Bard! <laughs> Bard with an eight charisma! He's probably a really crappy comedian or something. <laughs> really crappy comedian or singer. He's a dwarven folk singer, but no one likes dwarven folk songs. <laughs> okay, so Bard. Alright, and last. What is your background? What did you just do before you decided to hit the road and sing songs that do magic? What were you doing before that? One! So we're going with the background chart right here. That's my, my D8 for this. Two! Oh god! <laughs> so you're a bard entertainer, you just never learned when to quit! <laughs> Bard entertainer, and you just never learned when to quit. You don't know when enough is enough, and you should just hang up the loot and do something else. Or would it be put away the drums since you're a dwarf? I don't know. <laughs> there we go. And, and Turner, <laughs> I can't even spell. Oh man. So, okay, one more, one more. That was a riot. We're gonna go back to the uh, world. The uh, four. Actually, no. Let's make this even. Let's make this even worse. We're gonna go with forty-four. Drop the highest. So we're gonna see how bad we get with that. Hey guys, like, I need to erase one of these character sheets because I've only got two character sheets. Okay, so I erased our halfling paladin because I don't want I don't want good characters in my roster. I want nothing but shitty characters. All right, so I erased him. We got a new sheet, sort of. And what we're going to do now is we're going to roll 46 and we're going to drop the highest. Just to see <laughs> how crappy of a character we can make with this. Alright, so... Oh, under normal rules we would have gotten a 14. But since we're dropping the highest, we've only got 10 for our strength. And another way you could feasibly tilt this in the direction of the player's um is you could actually decide that one of their one of their stats they're allowed to just bump up to 16 or something so that way they're not stuck with something crappy if the dice hate them and you want to give them a fighting chance that's of course before adding in any racial bonuses so it's possible for them to start off with an 18 using that normally so if you if you want to give them some degree of control over their character just insert somewhere that they're allowed to just set one of theirs to 16 Alright, and, you know, that would have been an 11, but <laughs> instead we've got a 6 for dexterity. <laughs> this is like disappointment in the game. We had a 9 there. <laughs> oh, God. 6! <laughs> Go with 4d6, drop the highest. You will be lucky if you get a 10. <laughs> okay, let's see what let's see what racing class you are. You miserable pile of crap. Okay, seven half alpha. <laughs> okay, so for this one. Half elf, they normally get a plus one to two different stats. So, what we're gonna do here, or at least I think that's what they get, they might get something else. Let me check my book real quick. <laughs> yeah, I think half elves are just a plus one to two different stats. Your choice. Alright, no, charisma increases by two, and then. Two other choices, two others of your choice increased by one. So he's not uh, completely unlikable. He's just really dumb and stupid and not really good for anything. Okay, I'll be nice. You're not going to be sickly. And let's at least give you nothing but evens. 
<laughs> oh man, this guy sucks. <laughs> so if you're gonna go with 46, drop the highest. Just so you have some really comically weird characters, let them choose to put one at 16. <laughs> or randomize which one gets 16. <laughs> okay, so you're a half elf. Alright, what is your class? That you will inevitably be not good at. Alright, that one rolled off the screen, but it was a three. Three, so cleric! Oh no! <laughs> Six wisdom cleric! <laughs> oh, Dios mios! <laughs> okay, we need to figure out. 2B, so that we need to figure out what domain you are. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh my head off if it's knowledge. <laughs> Alright, let's see what we got here. Oh my god! <laughs> That's a one! <laughs> we have a knowledge clerk <laughs> with an intelligence of six. And a wisdom of six! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> okay! What were you doing before the gods of knowledge decided Yes! This is going to be my magnum opus! If I can turn this dumb sack of crap into something halfway respectable, I will truly be a god! What were you doing? Evens! So we roll another d6. Oh god, please don't let it be folk hero. Two criminal! Okay, so. Okay, so he's half elf. He's a half elf criminal. That was blessed by the god of knowledge to become one of his disciples. You couldn't have picked a more. I wouldn't say deserving, but you couldn't have picked someone that needed it more. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> There's too much fun that can be had with randomization. I, this is why I love random charts in RPGs. Because <laughs> there's just some straight up bonkers things you can come up with. <laughs> Anyways, I am Aaron Der Shadel, and I will see you all next time.